Hey guys, May Flom here, and I've got a Tim Holtz image here, one of the blueprint stamps, a compass. This week our challenge is J is for journey. So I'm going to take you on a journey here. This is just embossed with black embossing powder. I'm going to take you into a journey of distressing and basically turning this into a card. So to start off with, I've got my mini distress inks in these great little tins. I love the tins. Can't imagine how I ever lived without them, to be honest, or the minis. And I'm just taking some colors here, and I'm just going on, and I'm adding a base layer of color. You know I love Distress, and the, one of the things that I love so much about Distress is that I can blend it, play with it, layer it, and get really rich, deep color in not a lot of time. It really shouldn't take me very long to get a background going, to get things hopping on this, and I love that. You know, it's just really so much fun to play with. So I'm going to do the whole card base here because I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with this. I'm not totally sure if I'm going to want to get other colors going in, maybe some browns coming in. So basically though, by coating the entire background, I don't have to worry. I've got, I've got it covered. And then I can come in and do as little or as much as I want. I'll take some gathered twigs here and just kind of edge things up. Just kind of give it a little more of an aged look. I love this trick with the brown, especially with, I like gathered twigs for this. It'll really pick up in areas where I was only lightly inking. And then next, I could get a little mist bottle with water in it. Um, but you know what? I'm just gonna get some water on my fingers because I want big flicks of water. Uh, yeah, I just took water right out of this and flicked it all over my background. And why would I do such a thing? Well, because I want big old water splotches. I really love distressed water splotches. And I think that it'll look, it'll end up looking really cool, bigger splatters there. And I'm going to want to think about where I'm taking this as far as what embellishments I want to use, maybe some metal pieces, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. I am going to take some Ranger Mist here. I think I've got some Perfect Pearls in Sunflower Sparkle. I love to add Sunflower Sparkle on my projects. It just is so much fun and I love the look of it. So we're going to do that. But first, I'm getting out my Tim Holtz stencils and I'm looking for a stencil that will, oh, that I think will work good on this particular card. And it could be any of them. I love every single one of these stencils. But I'm thinking for this, I'm thinking that what we want is this nice pattern. I like the idea of that. And I'm going to use some of the new Ranger texture paste on this. The texture paste is really nice. Basically, it's just light and fluffy, works beautifully with your stencils, and it takes color mediums really well. It's a lot of fun to work with. And I'm using this little scraper tool here. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm not trying to get a perfectly even coat or anything like that. And I'm just going around. I'll get on to the actual stamp in a few spots, but not too much. And the only thing I'm really doing is kind of scraping it down to make sure I don't have any, oh, at least not a lot on the stencil itself. And then just lift up. And if there were any spots that I wanted to clear off, I could very easily just get like a little wet cloth or paintbrush or something and rinse it off. What I am going to do, I'm going to hit this with the heat tool just very briefly. And then after I hit it with the heat tool, what I'm going to do, I'm just kind of trying to pick off if there's any paste on my surface for working here. After I hit this with the heat tool for a moment, I'm going to take a big Dina Wakely paintbrush and it's full of water. Well, not very, it's full enough, of, full, full of water, but it's not leaking. And I'm going to run this down the card. And what is so much fun with this paste 
it will slightly smear what I did there with my stencil. It'll smear more the harder I push. It's also going to affect that background and I can go harder. Like for example, in the middle here where my stamped image is, I'm going to go a little more aggressively because I want to get rid of some of that. And then if I'm less aggressive in other areas, it won't do as much. For whatever reason, this works really, this is a technique that works absolutely fantastic with the paste. Uh, I think it just, it's hardy enough that it holds up. It doesn't just smear all over. You still can, you can do that with the brush and keep all of the wonderful texture and pattern. And I just think that is so cool. I love how that, that looks. And now that we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and get my perfect pearls missed out here. I should only need like one squirt, but I might put two because I just, I love my sunflower sparkle. I can almost never get enough of that. And I'm going to let this dry off. Really, I should be able to just sit here with the heat tool for a little bit and it should dry off nicely. And once that's dried off, I'm going to want to get something going here with some metals and some other layers and things. And I'm also going to pull out my brown ink again. And this time I'm going to directly apply it. And look how great that works with the texture paste and with everything. It just goes right over there and it really will stick just to where it's the raised areas for the most part. And again, if I wanted, I could come in here with some water and kind of flick some water on there. I could also, if I had a squirt bottle of water, use that. It really depends, you know, what, you're, what look you're going for, how you want this to work out. Now, for my card, I know I'm getting very messy, very mixed media, funky with my card here. One thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get some metal embellishments going on on this. And actually, now that I've, I've done this a bit, I'm going to want to get out this peacock feathers and do more peacock feathers on here. I feel like it needs a, another hit of kind of that beautiful peacock color. And I love these round blending tools for stuff like this because it's it makes it so so easy to color and add depth add layers of color without worrying too much about that hard line that hard edge okay i like that and i'm not going to add more green i'm going to leave the green as it is i'm probably going to trim this down a little stitch around the edge and mount it that's generally what i would do with something like this where I've got a card here that's just got a lot going on to it and a lot of, it's going to have a lot of weight to it. It's got a lot of detail to it. Um, so, hmm, discoveries, authentic. I think authentic. We're going to go with authentic and I'm dabbing this with some distress paint and a little heat to it, of course. So distress paint, I love. I love all the distress. So I, I definitely love distress paint for decorating my metal embellishments. And the only thing you need to be careful about is that when you're doing this, if you're drying it off, you need to be careful that you don't grab the metal piece as soon as you think it's dry. But when you do think it's dry, or at least mostly dry you can come in and I first go with the paper towel here to see if I can rub some off so there's kind of a lot on here still and then I'll go in with like a sandpaper block whatever I happen to have handy and I like this because it'll scratch it off of the surface but not scratch the paint out of the letters so the inside the letters will stay that lovely green and I'm going to use the stamp to help me design my card here to help me figure out where to put things. I've got my little, this is this little like circus tent little container. I love cute containers on my workspace. And I've got this and it's full of metal bits and pieces. These are all metal bits and pieces that I've purchased over the years from Simon Says Stamp. Um, they have all kinds of fun, fun doodads and bits and things. So I'll just pick a couple out. And basically what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for the size of things and the shape of things. 
And I'm not worrying too much about like, oh, well, this is really dimensional or this is not really dimensional. That I'm not going to concern myself with. I'm more going to look at, ooh, that's kind of cool. I'm more going to look at like the, oh, the general shaping of things and if things are a good match for what I want to do. And I like, I like where that's going a lot. So I'm going to glue everybody down here. And I think those are the three, although, ooh, now I see this one and I kind of like this one. Decisions, decisions. Do I like that one best? That one kind of takes over, but then I could go like that. Yeah, I think I like that. And I've got my PPA here. Love my Perfect Paper Adhesive. It will dry clear. It will be totally matte finish. You won't see where it was. And I decided on this one over this one is because this wheel thing here is pretty flat and would work on a layout, scrapbook layout or other project. This one has more dimension to it, so it's going to be a little more limited in where it's going to work well for me. So a lot of times that's what I'll make my choices on when I'm going back and forth between a few things. Oh, although there's this one too. I'll pick based on, okay, well, what is this project that I'm doing and... Is there is there other projects that it would work better on? Is there something else that will work here that maybe wouldn't work well on other future projects? So that's kind of something I keep in mind when I'm working. And I'm going PPA crazy here. Getting all this stuff down. And it'll need a few minutes. When you first, because this is a very fluid liquid adhesive, when you first put it down, it's not going to just automatically be just set you know everything's not going to just instantly hold it's going to take a minute so we're going to have jewels you know what we're going to do a jewel i'm going to color it with some alcohol ink and you'll just need to you know just give it a chance let it let it get in there let it do its thing i'm just kind of digging through some buttons and things i'm looking to see if i have anything that i want particularly to use uh, I found this little little jewel and then I'm gonna color that I think I'm gonna color this let me find out where would I put it like right here oh I like that I like that a lot okay so we're gonna do that and I've also got this little jewel and yes my card is wanting to try to warp but that's not a problem we're just having our creative journey here through some card making fun okay and I just need to find I'm pretty sure I have one more jewel in this case here and if not oh yep yep I mean pearl there's one more pearl I just want if I'm gonna have like sparkly things I want like three of them I'm, I'm weird about my my threes I know okay so let me show you how to alcohol ink this now super super simple and if you haven't noticed oh that just happened that's okay it got I, I smacked into it and it's not dry yet so when things aren't quite dry yet, you've got to be careful. So I'll just put more adhesive on there. It will hold. It just needs time to actually stick and stay stuck. More adhesive. Not a big deal. Okay, and this guy got knocked clear across. All right, where are we at? I think that should work except the little guy's not really wanting to play nice okay that that looks does that look right to me hmm. now I'm gonna sit here questioning where I had all this stuff okay that looks about right to me or at least close enough although now this isn't okay gosh darn it don't like it when that happens but my crafting guys it's not perfect and my videos I don't cut out when I mess up I just don't. I don't believe in that. I mean, if it was something where it's like there's a big crash and a mess and I need to fix it and I can't, I need to stop the camera, I'm fine with that. But in general, I don't stop the camera. I want you to see, you know, things don't always work out. Things aren't always perfect. Right now, I'm trying to get some jewelry pliers to pry off the back of this thing that I want to color because I'm really going to need it to not have this giant 
backing if I'm gonna make this work and now watch it won't even come off my goodness So it won't come off, but here's the thing. I actually think it'll work out just fine. I'm going to take, I'm gonna start with some caramel alcohol ink and I'm just going to take it and put a drop on there. I could get out the blending solution and go that route uh, if I wanted to. I'm just not too worried about it being perfect. I really just kind of wanted to make it kind of a brownish color, give it some age. And I shouldn't need to do anything to that. Basically in a few seconds, the alcohol ink should set. And this alcohol ink right here is wet. I wanna get that off while I can. I could check it, you know, just make sure, but it's already, yeah, it's, there's like one little spot, but it's pretty much already dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a big old glob of glue in there and just set it on in, set it on in. Okay, well, I like where this is going. I want to add a couple of metal brads and then just stitch around the edge. But you guys, you saw how quickly and how much fun I just took you on a little mixed media journey into some fun card making. To check out the Simon Says Stamp Monday Challenge blog, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's going to be a link down below. And to see a picture of my project, again, the link is down below if you're not already on the Simon page. I wish you guys some very happy, funky, messy crafting.